When a subscriber wants to reduce their costs and reviews all their subscriptions, how do you prevent yours from being one of those that gets canceled? That's the topic we'll discuss in this episode. I'm Robert Scrobe, and this is the show that helps your membership or subscription business to be unleavable. Just a few years ago, subscriptions were viewed as a fun and exciting way for consumers to access a wide range of products and services. Now, the entire industry is being painted in a negative light. As the economic growth slows, inflation rises, and war rages on, you see all kinds of personal finance gurus coming out of the woodwork to appear on news networks, TikTok, on, and YouTube, proclaiming, These days, everything from makeup to meals can be delivered to your door. More and more people are signing up for subscription services like meal preparation kits, clothing rentals. A 2018 survey found Americans spend an average of $237.33 on subscriptions each month, including cell phone service. That's 197% higher than what people surveyed originally estimated. Wall Street Journal personal technology columnist Joanna Stern makes the case to stop wasting money on unnecessary monthly subscriptions. Action alert, action alert, action alert. Stop that subscription. How do I cancel those subscriptions? How to avoid getting trapped into some of those unwanted subscriptions. Yes, it's getting out of hand. More and more of your money is going to monthly and yearly subscriptions for all types of things. What about you? What's been your experience as someone who's in the subscription business? Have subscription businesses, have we gone too far in creating subscriptions for features that should be available for one price? Or are subscriptions a path towards innovation, an option driven by consumer demand for increased flexibility to subscribe rather than buy? Post your comments below. I genuinely want to hear from you and understand what you think, and I read every comment and respond too. In this episode, I'm gonna reveal how you can avoid getting canceled when your subscriber reviews their unwanted subscriptions. Before we dive in, press the like button and also subscribe to this channel to make sure that you're the first to know about future episodes. You and I work hard to generate new subscribers. We spend a lot of money to acquire each one. Then, once we have a subscriber, canceling that subscription becomes a way to save money. Over $100 that you can easily save in just by minimizing the subscription. I still remember back around 2004 when monthly subscriptions first started catching on. Advocates would proclaim, many of your subscribers won't even realize that they're paying for your service. They keep paying and paying, even they don't use it, just like the gym membership they don't use. What a terrible attitude to have. And even today, I'll often hear subscription business owners say, we tried to generate subscriber engagement, but it just reminded members that they're paying for the subscription and cancellations increased. Trying to run a subscription business based on zombie members paying for, but not using what you deliver, may work for a while, but longer term, it's a recipe for disaster. In 2008, during the Great Recession, I watched in the wings as half the subscription businesses disappeared in a mass calling. When subscribers got laid off, or when they knew someone who had gotten laid off, They woke up really quickly and cut the subscriptions they weren't using. So what's the answer? How can you remain valued in the eyes of your subscribers? Two words, subscription, leadership. While leadership books focus on the employer-employee relationships where the boss can call a meeting, subscription leadership is about forging strong relationships with the people who are paying you for the privilege, even though you can't call a meeting and get them to listen. Remember, you have to earn the opportunity to communicate by delivering value. As it says in my book, Retention Point, every member contact is a sales communication. Subscription leadership is a big topic, and it's an area that I go deep into with my private consulting clients. But for this episode, let's dive into three areas that'll help you get started. First, engagement. There's no substitute for having a subscriber using the product that you deliver. 
If you are delivering a publication, a subscription box, or a consumable like food or razors, your subscriber will notice your product stacking up unused. They won't need a talking head on TikTok to suggest that they cancel. The pile of unused products will be enough to cause them to reevaluate their need. But if they're consuming those products, it confirms the value of your subscription. It's recurring proof that they're making the right decision. The only downside is the real secret to engagement lies within the first seven days after your subscriber joins. How many times have you bought something and seven days later you forgot you even purchased anything? Many of your subscribers experience the same thing. Your goal should be to make your subscriber more excited seven days after they purchased than at the moment that they joined. The fastest way to test whether or not this is working is to launch a new subscriber email sequence. You can put a test sequence into place within a few hours to measure the results over the next week uh, with new subscribers. And if your technology enables you to identify which subscribers aren't engaged with your product, you may consider a similar sequence to generate engagement within this group as well. The second key to minimizing cancellations is social proof and subscriber stories. A lot of subscription companies ask me, what should we be sending our subscribers on an ongoing basis? Great question. First, you wanna welcome them with your communication. You want them to be excited to receive and open each email or package you send. The easiest way to accomplish that is by injecting personality into your communications. The worst sin is to be boring. How do you inject personality? One powerful way is to include stories about your current subscribers. Your subscribers like to read about people like them. Chances are your subscribers have a lot more in common with each other than they do with someone in the general public. Telling before and after stories of the benefits members have experienced has a tremendous positive effect on three things. It helps new subscribers engage for the first time because they see others using the product and they believe that they can experience similar results. Two, it helps experienced subscribers to feel part of a community that shares victories. When individual subscribers experience a win, they all win. And number three, it helps to lock in long-term subscribers by enabling them to feel part of a movement of like-minded individuals who share a common interest. Yes, subscriber stories can have a huge impact. So make sure your emails, websites, and other media about your subscribers and how they engage with your product, rather than focusing on the topic of your product itself, focus on your subscribers. That has a tremendous positive effect. And then that brings us to the third engagement strategy, referrals. Many subscription businesses resist the idea of creating a referral program. After all, some of the subscribers refer without it, and most subscribers ignore it altogether. The answer is to position your referral program as a gift to the person that's being referred. This way, your subscriber is seen as doing a solid favor for their friend whenever they pass on a referral. And while the new subscriber is a huge benefit, that's the reason to join to create the program, there's also another hidden benefit. Subscribers who refer almost never cancel. When they refer someone, they've made a commitment. Think about it. If they did cancel, how would that make them look to the person that they referred? Hopefully you can see, putting energy into a member referral program has a double impact. For each new member you generate, you also lock in the member who made the referral. That's what it takes to be unleavable. Let's summarize what we've covered today. Personal finance consultants are coming for your subscribers, encouraging them to review and cancel their subscriptions to save money. After you've spent much time, money, and effort acquiring subscribers, talking heads on news programs, TikTok and YouTube are recommending that people save money by canceling their subscriptions. And having zombie subscribers who pay but don't use your product is a dangerous position to be in as they'll cancel in a second if they feel their economic situation may be threatened. The good news is you've got three important subscription leadership strategies to fight back 
and win to stop that cancellation. First, engagement. You win or lose engagement within the first seven days. Are your subscribers more excited seven days after they joined or have they forgotten that they subscribed or at all? A seven-day email sequence is the fast way to test and measure engagement. Second, social proof. Make your emails, product inserts, and communications focused on your subscribers and the benefits they experience. Subscriber-focused communication engages both new and long-term members. And many subscription businesses realize there's as much money in the media company they create as the subscription that they deliver. And finally, referrals. The secret to maximizing referrals is to position the referral as a gift to the person who is being referred. And remember that subscribers who refer others are much less likely to cancel. Thus, each time you get a new referral subscriber, you've actually retained two people. You got the new subscriber and you retained the referring subscriber, probably for life as they're going to be very reluctant to cancel after making a referral or two. Now, if you've enjoyed and benefited from the concepts that I've shared in this episode, then I'm confident that you're going to love this resource. After more than 25 years of working with subscription and membership businesses, I've identified all of the key factors that are seen in the most successful subscription businesses. If you'd like to know what they are, you can either buy the book on Amazon or instantly download a digital copy for free at subscriptionsmadeeasy.com. After you receive the book, there's an opportunity to have me walk you through the details and get your questions answered. You'll probably want that too, but there's no obligation. What do you think about the strategies that I've shared in this episode? And how do you prevent your subscriptions from being canceled? Post your thoughts in the comments below. I always love to hear from you. Also, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and that way you're the first to know when new episodes are available. And finally, check out this video on the 34 reasons subscribers cancel and how to stop them with ideas that you can use to improve your subscription retention rates. Enjoy that episode, and I'll see you next time on Be Unleavable.